Tonight, Mark chapter 10, we're dealing among Christians, pastors, scholars, churches, a line that's in the sand, a controversy. And everybody's got their own favorite place they run, discover, they defend themselves while trying to beat up and TKO another. So what we have here is, he arose from thence and cometh to the coast of Judea, on the farther side of the Jordan River. And the people resort unto him again. There's the resort. If you go to a resort by a river, it's a Bible. King James 1611 Bible. As he was wont, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him, asked him, say, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him, okay? Now the subject at hand is divorce. And they're not asking a question, say, hey, you know, what's the information? We truly want to seek God. We really want to. No, we're tempting him. We want to get him in trouble. And he answered and said unto him, what did Moses command you? What did the law say? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and put her away. We'll look at that later. And Jesus answered and said, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote this precept. And that will be Deuteronomy 24 when we go there. All right, that's Deuteronomy 24. But from the beginning of creation of God, Genesis 2. God made the male and female. There's no other question about it. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you don't like. I don't care what pronouns you want to have, what you don't want to have. The Bible's correct. God is correct. God is creator. He made the male and female. You don't like that. That's tough. You go get yourself a ship. Go sell to another country. Start your own country. And you can believe whatever you want to believe in that country. This country is founded upon the Geneva Bible of the Puritans of the Bible. You want to ruin a nation just because you want to sin. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. These are the words of Adam. Jesus is quoting Adam. And they twain shall be one flesh. Then they are no more twain but one flesh. A marriage of a man and a woman together. They're one. She takes the husband's name. She don't take the husband's name. <laughs> Bible says, and God, and God called their name Adam. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Now, if you've been to a wedding service, and the preacher's got up there, you know, he's got her, and he's got him, and, you know, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. What if you got an unsaved and unsaved uh, person? God didn't join them two together. What if you got two unsaved people? God didn't join them together. What do you got a Christian serving the Lord doing right and a, and a carnal Christian who doesn't want to do right? God didn't join them together. Paul specifically said, you're not to join yourself to unbelievers. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. The context is Adam and Eve. There's somebody who would come up in the garden and would try to break them together. The devil. You know what the devil was hoping when, when Eve took that fruit and ate? Adam would say, nope, not doing it. That would have broke things up. And in the house, the disciples asked him again of the same matter. He said to him, Whosoever shall put away his wife, divorce, and marries another, commits adultery against her. If a woman will shall put away her husband and be married to another, she commits adultery. All right, adultery is you divorced your spouse. And then you go marry another. 
adultery. But we're not done. So let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's see what the law says. But remember, 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 we're not under the law, Deuteronomy 24. But let's see what the law said. Deuteronomy 24, 1. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her. So is what? He looks at her. He says, well, you know what? I don't want to stay married to her anymore. Then let him write a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. The law said, all right, give her a bill of divorcement. For whatever reason, give her a bill of divorcement. That's the law. And when she departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. The law states you can divorce that woman for whatever reason you want. She may go and remarry. Jesus said, when we left off in Mark, they commit adultery. Jesus is allowed to change the law. It's not a contradiction. He's allowed to change the law. For he is the lawgiver. Ahead of Moses. Well, we're not done. If the latter husband hate her, her second husband, and when he write her a builder, for whatever reason he hates her, this woman's sorry, and gives it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or the latter husband died, death, which took her, her to be his wife. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. That she is defiled, for that is an abomination before her. What are you going to do with that one? He says, the first husband, all right, here's the bill of divorce. Get out of my house. She remarries. That husband gives her a divorce. She goes, runs back to her first husband. God says, no, 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 no. That's an abomination. God in the law, the law honored the second marriage over the first marriage that you cannot go back to your first husband. That's an abomination. That thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee the inheritance. Land. There's that land. Land. Israel. Land. Law. Jewish. Moses. Jewish. But there it is. Jesus said, what does the Moses say? He said, go ahead and write a divorce. There it is. That's what Moses said. There's the law. We're not under the law. Now go to Matthew. Now everybody wants to run to Matthew, right? Not now. Run to Matthew 5. 31. Let's go to their favorite book. Matthew 5, 31. It had been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let, her, let him give her a right in divorce. Deuteronomy 5. I mean, Deuteronomy 29. But I say unto you, oh, here we go. That's what the law says. This is what God says. That whosoever shall put away his wife, divorce, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. All right. You put your wife away. Except, except, if she or her husband, if they commit fornication, they have gone outside the marriage bed. Jesus said, go ahead and put them away. Scripture with scripture causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. All right, Jesus lays a ground for divorce. 
one of the spouses have set, has gone outside the marriage bed. In the eyes of Jesus, that is a divorce. Now, you could reconcile. But if you say, you know what, you know, I can't, I won't, will not, Jesus is a go for it. Now, I'm not advocating divorce. I say whatever has happened, whatever is done, you just go through life and deal with it. And you better be extremely careful who you choose to marry. You better look at that person and think this is a lifelong engagement. This is a lifelong commitment. And it may be a long life. Now, don't be fooled. One of the things today is, well, you know, divorce rates are out because they're not getting married. They're living together. They're shacking up together. They're fornicating together. And when they get their first, what, what, you know, first fight, they move out. But the Bible form of marriage is not standing before a preacher. Adam and Eve did not have a preacher. Let me ask you a question. When the grandchildren of Noah in the land, what reverend, what pastor marry them? None. When Cain's children and Seth's children came to find the, the, the wives and the men, who they in the Bible, flesh joining flesh when a man cohabits with a woman and a woman cohabits with a man that is marriage the the woman that is caught in adultery uh, the woman at the well jesus says go tell your husband she says i don't have a husband she says you have four of them. what's the case she's been with four different men and jesus says those are your husbands Today, you would call that Mormonism. It's a sin. Now, now, let's finish, let's finish the, the, the conflict. First Corinthians. Let's look at the church age. First Corinthians 7. Paul, right into the Gentile church. Chapter 7, verse 10. Let's see what's written to the church. Not the law, not the Jew. This is written to Jews and Gentiles, Romans 10. They're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. On to the married, boom. I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Paul says, what I'm writing right now is God. Paul says, I am stepping aside from my writings. God's writing this. Let not the wife depart from her husband, period. But, but, but there's more. It's a double period. The colon. That's the command. But, okay, here we go. If she depart, right in the Christian, let her remain unmarried or to be reconciled to her husband. Let not the husband put away her, his wife, period. So what God says, not Paul, for Christians, don't divorce. It's, thing, it's a legal term in, in, in our law called legal separation. It's not a divorce, it's a separation. It's a time, you know what? It, it's a cooling off. And after you cool off, you get back, you read, date, and you get things, and you reconcile to each other and you don't go see anybody else. You don't date anybody else. And you don't sleep with anybody else. But to the rest, rest, speak I, and not the Lord. Again, God is speaking. If any brother saved, have a wife that believeth not, an unsaved wife, she pleased to dwell with him. Let him not put her away. So listen, no, no, let's take it great. Paul's writing to the early church. We're not America. We're not the lay of the scenes. We are 
talking in early June. Paul is taking for granted. Here's here's two two couples, a man and a woman. They get married. The man gets saved, but the wife doesn't get saved. So do I divorce her? He said, no, the Lord says, stay with her. If she be pleased to put up with you as a Christian, and the woman which has a husband that believeth not, she gets saved after marriage. If he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not put, leave him. Put away, verse 12, leave, verse 13. Look at the Bible give its own definition. So, two unsaved people, one gets saved, one doesn't. Don't go running to the court. Okay, I can get a divorce. No. God said, not Paul, God said, don't put away. Don't leave. Okay. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified, set apart by the wife. The unbelieving wife is sanctified, set apart by the husband. Or else your children be unclean. But now are they holy? Okay, now here's the thing. What about the children? You divorce and you got children. You've you broken everybody up. You've broken the family. You've broken the in-law. You've broken your children. You broke your contract the husband and wife. You broke your house. You, you, everybody. Now you got the children. And you got a marriage where there are two unsaved people. One gets saved. In that marriage, God says, okay. Now, the unsaved is not saved because of the saved, but God looks at, you know, that's a special situation. And the very fact is that the saved, they stay married. They put up with it. They, they keep the peace, the love, the joy, the patience. The long-suffering, understand where that's coming from. And hopefully the partner you have will not hinder your children from following the Lord. But, God speaking again still, if the unbelieving depart, unsaved wife, unsaved husband, Unsaved husband, unsaved wife, the wife gets saved, the husband gets saved, the other remains unsaved. If the unbelieving depart, I am not marrying that holy roller, I am not staying with him, I'm not putting up with that Bible, I'm not putting up with the church services, I ain't putting up with Paul, I ain't putting up with nothing. I'm out of here. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Look at that. God again says, all right, let there be a divorce. If your spouse steps out on you, okay, that's a divorce. If you were both unsaved, one of you got saved, and the unsaved says, I ain't, no, I ain't doing it. I'm leaving. Say, goodbye. I packed your bags for you. A brother or sister, Christian, is not under bondage. It's okay. Look what he said about marriage. Marriage is a bondage. You're going to have a big trouble with these African Americans. We don't want to talk about slavery. We don't want to talk about bondage. We don't want to talk about serving to do. We don't want to have all these words. They are King James 611 Bible words that are in God's vocabulary. And if you don't like it, you're going to face God one day. You know, you're not going to get no rewards of God if you don't serve. He's the great master. That's what rabbi means. Guarantee the Bible's changed where it said raster. I don't know what they would say. So God said, not Paul said, God said the marriage is broken. If the unbeliever leaves the marriage for the spouse that got saved after they were married, but God has called us to peace. And God, what we're God is saying, listen, if you keep those two together, there's not going to be peace. So looking at Mark, okay, no divorce at all, period. 
Look at the law. Huh? Anything. Anyway, anything you want to do, no divorce. I mean, divorce her. She goes out and remarries. <laughs> She's not committing adultery. That husband gives her a bill of divorcement. She cannot go back to the first husband. That second marriage is more bounding than the first marriage in the law. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. The law? We're not under the law of style. Men shall not wear what pertains to a woman. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. And thou shalt not make marks in the cunnings of the flesh for the dead. Touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. What, 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 got a problem? We got a problem? I want to thank the Lord. Well, here we are in his temple. Lord God, thank you for the temple that we are gathered here. To, to, to temple. Temple. We're not in a temple building today. You make sure. I want to have it. Open your Bibles at, Mal at the Malachi. We're going to talk about tithing. Tithing? What's tithing? And then when you go to Matthew, the most famous book of the church age, open your, 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 to the gospel of Matthew, Matthew says, oh, wait a minute. If that husband and wife stepped out on the marriage, Jesus honors it as a divorce. Though, I mean, though you, you could reconcile. Reconcile if you can. But God looks at that marriage as it's broken. John chapter 4, you got four husbands. <laughs> Woe be to the woman that, or the husband that's sleeping around. God adds it up. One husband, two husbands, three husbands, four hundred, five wives, six wives, seven wives, eight wives. Uh, Mormonism. We go to God speaking, not Paul speaking. God, the Holy Spirit, using the pen of Paul, says, you ready? Two saved individuals, a male and a female, a husband and a wife say, listen, you got problems? Separate. But be reconciled. Don't go running off to your mother-in-law and your father-in-law and your mom, your dad. Don't go running off to your friends because they'll make it worse. God says, reconcile. God said, if you're both unsaved, one of you get saved, stay together. If there's going to be no hindrance, stay together. Don't leave. But if the unbelieving husband, the unbelieving wife departs, bye. Adios. See you later. That's the biblical form of divorce. However you want to look at it. That's the Bible. 